I think that these two weeks have really made the case for TV as potentially a director's medium going forward. Sure. Because what other medium would allow Miguel Sapochnik to make Braveheart one week and then basically make The Godfather the next week. Yeah, and Cersei Lannister, she settled all Corleone family business today. It really was like that. It did, it did actually have uh, echoes of that, and part of it, I think we were going to talk a little bit about this, was the ritualistic nature of the way this happened. Right. right? The scene we're talking about in Godfather counterbalanced the savage violence of what Michael Corleone does with a religious ceremony. Yeah, it was the baptism in the, at the, the end the of Godfather. The baptism of the kid. And in this episode, I was really struck by not just the, the, the gentle, foreboding pacing or the super creepy piano music that played throughout, yeah. but that montage montage that began the episode of all of the characters in King's Landing putting on their armor. And not putting on their armor before battle, but putting on the, their clothing in a way that suggests what their identity was. And we saw in the sequence, we saw Tommen go from being a scared little boy mm -hmm. to being the king because of what he put on his head. We saw the High Sparrow put on his dress sackcloth, yes. which I assume you know, his normal clothes used to carry just like uh, Idaho roasters, yeah, but like this a, was like Yukon Gold. Alexander McQueen. It was like a, kind of like a more of like a cream bone color. We were speak. talking uh, Pret a Porte here, but <laughs> yeah. Cersei, Cersei finally got ready for her Michael Jackson, late period Michael Jackson costume I, party. I think I bought my wife a coach bag on Canal Street that kind of looked like that. I'm a big fan of supervillains who finally just go fine and dress like supervillains. Yeah.